Would you look at that? This might look like a regular old production studio, but it isn't. We're in the Muscle Shoals sound studio. Famous bands like the Rolling Stones and Leonard Skinner made music here. So did Paul Simon, Cat Stevens, Joe Cocker, Willie Nelson, and Bob Seger. You can feel the music energy. Feel it? I do. I wonder how many singers stood in this very booth and recorded music while on drugs. We're in Muscle Shoals, Alabama. But it's not just Muscle Shoals that makes this area so neat. Tucked away in Northwest Alabama are four cities that have a lot of history, music, style, and Southern pride. The whole region's known as the Shoals. This whole area is pretty well known among artists, but I don't think you've heard of it before. This was day 14 on my southern adventure, and there's been a lot of tragedy and poverty and all sorts of real so far. But it was time for a break. The long, weary days ahead would provide a lot more up and close with America's downfall. I wanted to change a pace, and I wanted to show you a side of Alabama you probably didn't even know about. I listen to the wind, to the wind of my soul. I've sat upon the setting sun, but never, 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 never. That's a Cat Stevens song. Well, not really a Cat Stevens song. He can sing a lot better than I can, but it's sort of a Cat Stevens song. Old Cat spent a lot of time here in the Shoals. You're probably like, why would these famous musicians come down to the middle of nowhere's Alabama and make some of the best music we've ever heard? Well, that's a good question. It just took a vision. Back in the late 50s, some record producers opened up a music studio right here. It's called Fame Studios. Artists said there was something special about the way music sounded when it was recorded here and word got out. So famous musicians started coming here in big numbers. Eventually, they opened up Muscle Shoals recording studios down the road. And the hits out of this place kept a coming. Eventually, this became known as the hit recording capital of the world. Hundreds of albums were created here. And they still make music in this building today. It's quiet in town, so artists can come down here and they can make music away from prying eyes and paparazzi. I heard when I was in town, Afro Man and Demi Lovato were there too. That's intriguing, right? I think a few people even spotted me. The whole area is really neat. The Shoals, as they call it, is made up of four cities. Muscle Shoals, where we are now, and then there's Florence, Sheffield, and Scumbia. There's close to 200,000 people here on the banks of the Tennessee River. It's really pretty when you cross over the river with all the bridges and all. Most of Alabama is very wide and flat, and it's perfect for agriculture. But here it's kind of hilly, so the place has always had its own kind of unique culture to Alabama. It feels more like Tennessee than Alabama. It's a lot more progressive here than it is in the rest of the state, although people here do vote conservative in large numbers. To me, the Shoals doesn't feel very Southern, but there's still a lot of charm. The biggest city here is Florence. There's 40,000 people here today, and it's growing a bit. Right now we're in downtown Florence. They have this neat, clean little area that's maybe 10 blocks long with some shopping and dining and a few things to do. It's the largest downtown of all the downtowns in this part of the state. It's pretty basic though. It's pretty quiet. There's no homeless tents or bums here though. Nuh-uh. 
Can you imagine if all of our downtowns were this clean? I can't. I heard Florence was a little hoity-toity, and I guess I got that vibe. The fashion here is okay. Okay? Hmm. This must be what kind of fashionable Alabama women wear. And they have art-ish, I guess. Not sure if this is anything I'd want in my house, but it's art. They do have a little movie theater downtown Florence. You don't see many of those anymore, do you? So I hear they try to keep everything local, like small businesses and entrepreneurs, not all big box stores. Although there's three Walmarts in the area, but that's Alabama for you. Florence became kind of important as a transportation hub along the Tennessee River in the 1800s, but it never exploded here or anything, at least not yet. Florence has been called one of the best places to retire in the South. I think that's because it feels so over-the-top ordinary here. There's some famous musicians who have homes here, but for the most part, a lot of people aren't wealthy. It's not that type of place. Economically, it's sort of average. Homes here on this street are about 175 grand, and that's a steal, I tell ya. Crime's a little bit above average. Some would say it's boring. Older people would be just fine with that. It's just a quiet, clean, little middle-class community right at the base of the Appalachians. There's far worse places to live, I'll tell you that. This is one of many historic neighborhoods in the region. A lot of these houses were built before Reconstruction. A few of these houses were even here before the Civil War. One of the big draws here is the University of North Alabama. It's sort of small. There's 7,000 students here. It's actually the oldest university in the state. And guess what? They have lions here. I know. That's because the university's mascots, the lions. This is the only college campus in the country with real lions. They keep them in a well-protected cage in the middle of campus. They even march their lions down to the football games on Saturdays. That's some intimidation, huh? The college is on the north end of downtown and they have big lion paw prints leading to campus to let you know that. Even though Florence is kind of a college town, it's a lot quieter than most college towns I've been to. There isn't a big party scene here. It's just a calm, quiet place to earn a degree that may or may not be worth anything one day. We'll be right back. So this is probably a good time to talk about one of my sponsors. Look, I stay up on the news, and I keep hearing about this financial crisis that's going to happen. Like Bloomberg and BlackRock and even Wells Fargo are saying we need to change our financial plans. Some are saying the U.S. dollar won't be the world's currency. Other news is saying we're due for a recession. But almost everything you read says something's brewing. One way to have a good backup plan is to invest in gold and silver. A lot of experts say... The cost of gold is going to go through the roof soon. Patriot Gold Group is a top-rated gold and silver coin dealer that helps customers invest in physical precious metals. If you think we're going to see a financial crisis, a good alternative is a no-fee-for-life 401k or an IRA that's backed by physical gold and silver. A lot of top experts say gold and silver is going to hit record highs. I'm telling you, I'm doing it. The link to Patriot Gold is in the description. And let them know Nick Johnson sent you. And now back to the show. So we talked about Florence a bit, but there's a lot more to this area than just Florence. Across the Tennessee River is Muscle Shoals. That's where we first started. You know where Fame Studios is. Muscle Shoals is also a pretty decent place to live. But it's not nearly as charming as the other cities in the area. 
It feels pretty strip molly to me. Seriously, almost all of Muscle Shoals is shopping centers and above average neighborhoods. But that's what a lot of people want, I guess. There's 16,000 people in Muscle Shoals, and it is booming here. The population's gone up 60% in the last 20 years. There aren't a lot of places in Alabama that are growing fast, but this is one of them. I mean, traffic in Alabama? Who'd have thunk it? So I drove out to the edge of town to see how the growth looked out there. You can actually see how they're annexing all the farmland to keep building all the new homes for people that want to come into town. Somebody told me they're strategically trying to manage the growth. I hope they pull it off. It'd be a shame if they didn't. It's a little bit more expensive here than it was in Florence. A home here is in the $214,000 range. That's just funny to me that $214,000 seems expensive to these people. There's a lot of deals to be had in the South, I tell ya. The homes we're looking at now are closer to the $300,000 range. It's all very nice. I can understand why people would want to live here based on those prices. And then there's horse ranches and some pretty countryside just outside of town too. Muscle Sholians make far more money than the people in Florence, in case you care. Some of you do. But all the homes I saw over here didn't look as architecturally interesting as the houses next door in Florence. Of course, there's going to be a little bit of Alabama everywhere you go. These homes are moderately priced, I assume. Now culturally, it's all about music. We talked about that already. Muscle Shoals is known worldwide for shaping rock and roll and soul. Some even call this the birthplace of the blues, but I thought that was in Mississippi. So I guess the music thing is part of the draw, but is that really a draw? If you're a musician and you can't afford to break into Nashville, this is a good alternative, but for everybody else, it's just an average place. Just a couple miles from Muscle Shoals is the city of Tuscumbia. It's just a teeny little town. There's only 9,000 people here, and they're growing a little bit. Probably some spillovers from the region's growth in general. Supposedly it's way safer here in Tuscumbia than it is in the rest of the area, but it's also a lot smaller. Look at this little downtown area. This is Main Street, Tuscumbia. It looks just like what you think an older southern town would look like. I could see myself strolling around on these streets, listening to music and catching up on the town tea. Could you? You can get a home in Scumbia for 155000 right now. Again, what a bargain, right? Here's what one of their little neighborhoods looks like. Just small, quiet streets where kids can play and not get shot at. The type of place where you can leave your bike outside and a crackhead won't steal it. Probably. Now I talked about music history, but there's other history here too. This is Helen Keller's birthplace, right here in Tuscumbia. Helen Keller was an inspiration to tons of people because she was able to overcome so much at an early age. Anytime you think you can't ever accomplish something, remember Helen Keller. Sheffield is the last little town up here to talk about. There's close to 10,000 people here, and it's also growing a little bit. This is what their little downtown looks like. They all kind of look the same. A little main street that has a combination of old and modern. I have to say, all these cities do a good job of updating everything, but still keeping the southern vibe thing going.
Homes in Sheffield are the cheapest in the region by far. You can get a decent house here for under 100000 everyone. I mean, look at this. Just some random neighborhood I turned into. I've heard people call Sheffield an investor's dream. Get in on that, people. And they say there isn't anywhere cheap left in America. Huh? There's some shady pockets of Sheffield, just like there are next door in Scumbia. But it's not that bad. Come on now. I brought that up when I was talking to a bartender in town. I was like, this place is pretty nice. It's kind of basic, but it's cheap. And he told me locals call Sheffield and Tuscumbia ghetto and white trashy. They call them Chefganistan and Tuscompton. I was like, number one, that's not very original. And I don't get it. I've seen ghetto and white trash. This is not that. I think their perspective is a little skewed. But good for them. Living life in their little Alabama bubble and all. So what's it like to live here? Well, we already talked about the culture. It's not just music that makes this place sing. It's also very artsy here. There's museums all over the place, and they have arts festivals every month somewhere around here. And outdoors-wise, you're right on the edge of the Cumberland Plateau. It can be sweltering in the summer, though. Let me tell you, I was here in early April, and it was already 90 degrees. But you can cool off. This is McFarland Park, where a lot of people get together and hang out without having to worry about crime. That's nice. Everyone seems in good spirits down here. I don't think they realize how good they have it, though. If this was in many of our largest cities, nobody with a decent job would want to come down here. The place would be filled with tents and bums and needles and people digging in trash cans. Not here. The park's right on the Tennessee River. They call the Tennessee River the Singing River. Some people claim this water is a magical influence that led to the area's musical heritage and spawned numerous famous musicians. I listened to it. I didn't hear any singing. I don't hear it. So jobs-wise, there's more than you might think. There's the university, and there's a bunch of hospitals in the area. They also have some manufacturing and energy jobs. The TVA dam is here. It was this dam which provided the power that enriched the uranium that was used to make the atomic bombs that were dropped on Japan in World War II. That sucks. But if you want to work, there's work. There's factories up here that make parts for cars. Auto manufacturing is a big deal in the southern U.S. now. Used to be all up in the Midwest, but that's all Rust Belt. They left. A lot of them went overseas, but now a lot of car manufacturers are starting to open up factories down here in the south, especially in Alabama. Folks down here work for less because it's not as expensive, and they're just good, hard-working people for the most part. I also hear they're trying to lure in some tech companies to the area. We're not too far away from Huntsville, and that's really boomed, tech-wise. And get this, they have a remote worker program here. You can get paid up to 10 grand to move to the area. This is the fourth year they've been trying to get remote workers to bring their families into town. I hear about 200 people have already taken them up on the offer. And no, they didn't pay me to say that. I wish they did. When I was out and about in the Shoals, I didn't really do that much, actually. There's really not a lot to do at night. Here's what downtown looks like after hours. And I thought this was a college town. 
I hear in the summer tourists come and it's way more active. But damn. I mean, look at this bar. It's like 1045. Boring. Where was everyone? And the food here is not very interesting. Like, at all. But the good news is, I'd even have to leave my little block. This is where I stayed. It's called the Strickland Hotel. There aren't very many hotels in downtown Florence to choose from. To the right is where I ate dinner on the first night. That's Mugshots, which I later learned has like 20 locations in the south. I forced down possibly the worst meal I had on the entire trip at Mugshots. This was supposed to be a chicken salad and chili. I'm guessing the chili came out of a damn can. Yuck. At least I was able to watch the NCAA title game on a tiny TV in the corner. And our server was super friendly like. And to the left of the hotel, that's Flobama. Now this place had way better food. And they have live music, everyone. Hello. I swear people are coming in eventually. I just got there early. Do that crazy hand job. Some good old-fashioned local music is sure easy on the ears when you're in a little town like this. And you can kind of forget you're in Alabama when you're in Florence because it kind of feels a little bit fancy-like. That is until you see some of the fashion. A lot of people here wear boots. And hats. So fancy, Alabama. If I lived in Alabama, I'd have to live in a fancy area like this. Most of that state is so trashy. Karen, if you lived in Alabama, you'd probably live in a trailer park. Because you don't have a job, woman. Mappy makes all the money. Then Mappy needs a raise. Mappy will get a raise when I say Mappy gets a raise. Now both of you, go on, get it. Doink! I need to finish my damn video. Anyways, after I left Flobama, I went bowling. But not just at any regular bowling alley. There was a bowling alley in the basement of my hotel. What hotel has a bowling alley in it? I know. So of course I had to do that. And boy did I bowl. Somebody captured this moment when I was going for a perfect game. Ah, so close everyone. Maybe next time, right? Dang. <sighs> These lions sure have a nice sleepy life. Just watching the world go by. They have a nice quiet home that's safe and clean. To me, these lions summarize the whole area. Just a small little world away from everyone else. So the Shoals is a really unusual place. It feels more Midwestern than Southern. The whole area feels like a big, small town. But there's a lot of twang, and it definitely doesn't feel like the rest of Alabama. But it still feels Southern, in a way. But overall, the Shoals is kind of meh. I mean, compared to the rest of Alabama, it's nice. But overall, it's just meh. It's not a bad thing. There's culture, and it's cheap, and it's quiet, and it's peaceful. You can't find that in very many places anymore, can you? It's not exploding, but it's growing. I don't think this little piece of Alabama is going to change too much. It doesn't feel like what I've seen in other smallish regions that are booming. Places that look like they have the potential for overgrowth and traffic and eventually crime and other big city problems. They actually have a pretty good thing going on here. Definitely don't have to work your ass off to get ahead here. At least not yet. If this all looks good to you, send me an email. I know some really good real estate agents all over this part of Alabama. If you're thinking about making a move here, let me help you find somebody who can help you find your perfect home. And that's The Shoals, Alabama by Nick Johnson.
Are you looking to move and need advice? I do consulting. That's right. I'll sit down and talk about where the next perfect place for you and your family should be. I do it all the time. Together, let's find you a new home that's safe and checks all your boxes. And I can also help you find your new house too. Email me and I'll work with you on not just helping you figure out where to move, but I can help you find your perfect home too. That's right. I know awesome, reliable agents all over the country, and I'd love to connect you to somebody who can help you search for that perfect home. Hey guys, if you learned something new about America or what it's like to live in America, great. You should think about subscribing and turning on your notifications. You can also click one of these videos or playlists for more. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production.